Chris Renko, Richard Skinner here after another Bengals training camp. And Skinny, once again, the theme of this training camp is who's practicing, who isn't. Today, there was a lot more that weren't practicing, I think, than that were. Yeah, let's see if I can run it down off the top of my head. Both defensive ends, Trey Hendrickson, Sam Hubbard. Hubbard getting hurt yesterday. Apparently not too bad of an injury, but enough to keep him out. Trey Hendrickson, practice day one, hasn't practiced since. Then the offensive side of it, we've obviously got the Jamar Chase situation, which continues to be ongoing. And then, uh, let's see, Ted Karras. Uh, Alex Kappa, Orlando Brown, all got bet days off. Joe Burrow was a little bit limited. I thought he threw more than I thought he was going to. But let's keep in mind, tomorrow the pads go on. I think they want to make sure that all the veterans are ready to roll. Zach Taylor said everybody who's healthy is going to go on Tuesday. And then he was asked, well, what does that mean about Jamar Chase? And he kind of giggled and realized that, okay, yeah, he's healthy, but he's probably not going to practice again. We were looking for answers out of Zach Taylor when we went to the press conference. I don't think anyone really believed we were going to get any of the answers. Right. But once again, if I get this right, Zach Taylor says there's a plan in place and they've had good communication. They're on the same page, right? Yeah, and the same page is Jamar's not going to practice. Jamar's going to tell him when it's time to practice. And, Chris, I'm going to write a column at local12.com, and by the time somebody listens to this, it might be up. I think you need to steal yourself for the fact that he may not play in some regular season games. I, I, if he doesn't, I don't know what the point of this is for him. If he sits out two weeks, three weeks, what point did he make if he didn't gain anything in leverage? I mean, the only way he would really have leverage at this point for this year is to finally say, I'm prepared to sit games. I talked to a, to a guy today, a former executive in the league. He said, I, I assume that probably has to be part of his plan. And, and I think that's when we're into this serious mode. Now, listen, they could also come to terms. He could also back down. I mean, all of those things are in play. But I think you've been around Jamar Chase enough to know that when the guy says something and has a plan for something, he's going to stick to it. And right now he's sticking to not practicing. If he's not going to practice now, What's going to lead you to think he's going to then not extend this as far as he can? It's the only leverage he's got to get a deal. Thinking back, as you say that, last year when he busted up his back and he said, I'm going to play, and we're all like, there's no way you're going to play. And then, lo and behold, he went out and played, had a great game. So you're right. He says it. He's going to stick to it. And that's kind of the theme what we've talked about time and time again here is what is the end game because, you know, I get it. You don't want to get hurt in practice over meaningless practice. The guy could roll off the bus and – catch six balls for 75 plus yards and maybe a touchdown but you, you gotta at least show that you're serious at some point yeah and the other part to it is let's not forget Dan Pitcher at the combine told a group of writers uh, myself included that he wanted to use Jamar in the slot more I think you'd like to see what that looks like I think Joe Burrow would actually while to your point I'm with you I mean honestly you could roll him out at 1258 on September the whatever heck that opener is the ninth or 10th whatever that Sunday is and he could go out and catch eight for 120 he's that good but he probably would be playing outside receiver I think you want to if you're Joe Burrow, I think as much as they've been on the same page, this is Joe Burrow throwing the ball a little bit differently, having to probably do some things a little bit differently as far as timing, getting out of his hands. He's always great at that, but he's probably got to do it a little bit more because you know he's not throwing with quite the same velocity, and that might ramp back up. It might be normal in two weeks for all I know. But I think this camp especially, it's important to get Jamar Chase into it. Again, if you want to use him in the slot, what does it look like? Maybe it looks terrible when you go, okay, that was a bad idea. I don't think it's going to look terrible. Jamar Chase on the football field is never going to look terrible. But I think you'd like to be able to see all that. And, and, you know, maybe he does at some point go, okay, I think I've made my point long enough now and, and I'll capitulate. I, I just don't know, Chris. I, I just I think you got to steal yourself or this thing could spill for a while. It's going to be very interesting to see where this goes, how far they both sides take it, really. Uh, while Jamar's not out there, I thought T was a little bit limited today, which is not to be unexpected. But I keep seeing the same number coming up. And I know Zach Taylor kept saying, you know, hey, don't listen to the depth chart. Don't worry about who's out there first, whatever. But I know we've talked about Yoshi a lot. But number 12 keeps going. He was with the ones today. I know not everyone's out there. But for a guy that I think coming in, most of us thought no shot at making the roster, not saying he does, but he keeps getting more reps with the number ones and catching passes from Joe Burrow. I think Shedrick Jackson might be getting a little bit of a burn here. Yeah, and let's not forget, um, Joe Burrow's last press conference before we broke for summer break, he mentioned Shedrick Jackson by name. And sometimes, you know, you get three guys pop in your head and you do it. But Joe Burrow's so calculating with that stuff that I think he wanted to give him some love about how much he's done well in OTAs, how much he did well in, in mini camp. And, again, it was way lighter than what this training camp is. Um, you know, and – I didn't put him on my initial projected 53. I'd probably be hard-pressed to do it now because I think I'm keeping only six receivers, although one of them may not be playing for all we know, Jamar Chase. If there's a seventh, he probably works into that mix of the seventh guy. I mean, he has very much impressed, no question about it. And, again, when that quarterback says something, I mean, look, Trent Irwin is on this roster because Joe Burrow trusts him. Tanner Hudson is on this roster because he gained the trust of Joe Burrow last year. Those things are all really important. And when he mentioned Shedrick Jackson by name, I think that's really, really important.
And for those of you out there who haven't been to practices, to prove the point, Charlie Jones has not been getting reps with the ones, neither has Jermaine Burton. It's seems like a very specific group of guys that they're running with those ones. So that'll be something else interesting to watch as we go forward in camp. The defensive ends obviously now become a story. We thought maybe Trey Hendrickson was a, uh, another hold in. Apologies to Trey. We didn't know that you were hurt. So he's hurt. He's not practicing. Sam Hubbard as well. Yeah, I, I believe that. I guess I have to because that's exactly what <laughs> Zach Taylor said. But then he was pressed on. Can you tell us what the injury is? And he doesn't have to. There's no requirement that he has to divulge that. That's a regular season situation. But I still I, I get to roll in my eyes a little bit. But, um, you know, we saw a bunch of different – I thought Miles Murphy had a great day today. And, and, listen, part of that is when those vets are out for whatever reason, you got to take care of that opportunity and make the most of that opportunity. I thought Miles did a chunk of that today. I, I saw him a bunch in, in, in the backfield. It was a pretty lazy day of practice. Tomorrow will not be a lazy day of practice because the pads finally come out. And we'll get to see some maybe some running backs get some burn. The offensive defensive lines go at it. Skinny, are you wearing your pads tomorrow? I need to know how full contact we're going to be. Um, no, I haven't worn pads in quite a long time. I mean, uh, no, th th I'm at a stage of life I might need a different type of pad. <laughs> He's Richard Skinner. I'm Chris Riley. We're breaking down another day of Bengals training camp, and you could always get our analysis on the Skinny Podcast.